Ulamunaka and welcome to For the Record. Come tomorrow morning, Fiji will enter a new era in terms of television broadcast and telecommunications with the trials of the first ever digital TV services in Fiji, which are being managed by a government-owned company which has recently been formed. Now to find out more about what digital TV means to you and I and what the benefits are going into the future, we are joined tonight by the Communications Minister and Attorney General, Mr. A.S.A. Kayum. Mr. Sayed Kim, thank you very much for being on the show. Thank you for having us. Let's, let's begin with what digital TV actually is. A lot of people would not really be familiar with it. We've never had it. This is the first time it's coming into Fiji. Mm -hmm. What is the difference between what we have right now, what we are broadcasting tonight, and what begins tomorrow morning with, with the, the launch of uh, digital TV? Well, digital television, I started from the sort of more apparent um, uh, you know, I suppose characteristics of digital television. One of them, of course, get, gives much better coverage. The quality of the picture is a lot better. The reception is a lot better than the current. What we the current system is called the analog system. So digital television, uh, as soon as people get the set-top boxes uh, from next week, um, going on from Monday, uh, you'll actually see the quality in the picture change quite significantly. Uh, digital television and the technology that it uses also means that the the coverage of the television where people, for example, at the moment may be experiencing some fuzzy pictures um, and or sometimes it's not, you know, it gets so what they call it, snow whites. You, you should get rid of all that problem. Digital television, get rid of the uh, problem. It also, like I said, gives you uh, access to higher definition content. So watching sports and other programs becomes a lot more, you know, enjoyable. Uh, but also with digital television, we now will have five free-to-air television channels available. So FBC will have two, Fiji TV will have two, Mai has opted to have one, so there will be five already. But what it also does in the future, it gives the opportunity to have more free-to-air channels available. Now, uh, it also allows digital television Sometimes, you know, uh, you may want to have what they call pay-per-view content. But you may only want to watch a particular, uh, you know, for a particular week or two weeks. For example, if you had to pay to watch uh, a particular, you know, boxing tournament. So you can do that without the need to pay for monthly contracts. That's later on what we hope to introduce. You know, as I said, we hope to also introduce more free-to-air channels. Uh, depending on the TV companies like your company, uh, Fiji TV or my, if they want to take up more, there's opportunity to free it up. Before, as you know, uh, you know a few years back, um, prior to 2007, before we brought about the spectrum management in 2009, you know, they said there's only one channel available. Remember, you may remember my TV was given UHF as opposed to VHF. Uh, and that's one of the reasons because the spectrum was not managed properly. There was no good comprehensive thought for long-term goals. There was no long-term goal to bring in digital television. I think the other, the other issue is that with digital television, because of the uptake of technology, you are actually able to then um, not just offer ordinary Fijians a range of television stations, but also give them good quality picture. You're also saying to the rest of the world, we are in the 21st century. We are, for example, inviting investors to come to Fiji. So apart from roads, water, electricity, we also offer good television coverage. The, the television quality of picture is very good. So it you know, brings us into the 21st century. Many countries in the world, for example, when they've gone for the digital platform, they've essentially privatized it. Uh, they've had a private company essentially being given the rights for digital television, and they manage it. Whereas we have done, for example, uh, Wilesi, which is a government, 100% uh, government-owned company, is set up. It's a, it's a very basic company. Um, you know, it's not doesn't have hundreds of people working for it. It's only got a few people working for it. But this is the company that's sort of managing the digital rollout. Now, uh, it's interesting enough. The word Wilesi actually is a Itoke word that means wireless, and it comes from the, you know, when radio first started in Fiji without the wire, so it's wireless. So Wilesi. Uh, it was a big deal, you know. Uh, so the person who used to run the uh, the Itaukia language station was also known as Ratu Wailesi. 
so we, we decided to go back and use a very local term, very local word that people could identify with at that point in time. Wireless was a big deal. We, you know, you could have wireless radio. This is now obviously a big deal too. So it's a like back to the future type of thing, but obviously a um, you know big uptake of the technology. So digital television will be able to give us more opportunities in terms of watching more free to air channel, uh, channels, much better quality picture. It also helps people to be able to access television. And you know, as you know, with now with broadband, etc., you have now advent of smart television coming in. So you can even have access internet on your TV screens. As we know that we're doing an upgrade. We've in this year's budget, we've a zero rated duty, for example, of fiber optic cables on modems, etc., to ensure that the companies like TFL can also participate in this uh, uh, ITC uh, sector. Um, but also be able to provide high-speed broadband. So you can be watching your television, your digital television, in the corner of the screen. You could actually be doing, you know, accessing internet. So they are the sort of types of uh, technological, uh, you know, uh, advancements we've made. And this is part and parcel of that. But I have to say, Edwin, the, you know, uh, this is something that we have not thought about overnight. In fact, if you have, I've actually got the, the, the decree here, back in 2009, we put in place the, what we call the Regulation of National Spectrum Decree. You know, unfortunately, in the previous governments, um, they, they never grasped uh, the area of spectrum. Spectrum is, is like limited real estate. Each country is given, if, you, if I can put it very simply, a limited amount of airwave, a limited amount of uh, frequency frequency that you are given that each country can have. You have to manage that. Now we found uh, when we were appointed in 2007, we found that it was not managed well. It was simply people were given out stations, um, channels were given. As you know that initially when we put in place this regulation of the National Spectrum Decree, we got the radio stations to um, re reallocate the frequency in which you could find the radio station. The idea then initially was to ensure that there's less interference, that you're able to get uh, better consistency. You know, sometimes when you travel from Suva to uh, Latoka, before the radio, you know, would drop out in many places um, uh, because of the sort of frequency issue. Now uh, you have less of those dropouts, but also you know exactly, for example, I think in your case, you have one uh, 100.2 is, uh, is gold FM. FM. Then I think you go past Singatoka, it becomes 100. Correct. So you see, th the idea was that you don't lose the reception, but you may need to slightly tweak it, but it's close by to it. Easier to find. Not easier to find. So you simply do you know, sw a slight twist of the dial and you find it. That's how it started off. It was very interesting. I remember when we put in place this law. You know, we received a phone call from the New Zealand company. <coughs> As you know, there's a Mr. lot of people. Uh, I'm going to have Huge. to pause you Huge. for a while. Uh, we'll continue this, uh, but uh, for now we have to take a short break. We'll be right back. So, Naka, welcome back to For the Record. We're speaking with the Communications Minister, A.S.A. Kayum, about digital TV, which begins as of tomorrow. Trials begin tomorrow morning. Minister, We've, we've uh, sort of diverted away from digital TV sure. for a bit. We're talking about spectrum and spectrum allocations. Uh, when, when, when the government did roll out this spectrum allocation, uh, you were referring to uh, New Zealand media, but I believe what you were going to uh, uh, make reference to were re media reports that the government effectively owns or controls the media because you control spectrum and spectrum allocation. Mm. Well, in fact, the, the story was, I still remember, I was in Singatogo and one night we received a phone call from a New Zealand um, uh, media organization. I think some of the people over here had fed them misinformation. And they said, oh, you put in place this spectrum decree because you want to control the media, you want to control broadband, etc." which is very, very preposterous and very, very silly. In fact, it was quite stupid uh, because they obviously had not read the law. Uh, the law essentially empowered the Ministry of Communications to reallocate spectrum and to manage this limited resource that we have in a very efficient manner. Now, because it's, it's a limited resource, if you are not clever about managing the spectrum, then you don't get the maximum out of it. And that's what many countries, in fact, have failed to do. And that's what we found the previous communications uh, ministry was doing, willy-nilly giving out spectrum without managing it. So 
the whole idea was, and it's obviously you can see we put in place in 2009, and now it's 2016, and we're getting digital television now. Uh, it has been a bit of a long road, and it, it is a long road because it does require a lot of planning. It does require a lot of changes. You simply just don't run into it. Now, so we slowly started off with the radio stations. When then we recruited the, the resources and the assistance from International Telecommunications Union, uh, which is a UN-based body that's, uh, that's uh, based in Geneva. And um, so we started working very closely with them. We participated in a lot of international forums. And then we've got this uh, consulting company called ABC from New Zealand that's been working continuously with us. Some of the uh, digital work obviously got slowed down because of Cyclone Winston um, and also because of the lack of resources that were available uh, to us in terms of some of the uh, expertise, because a lot of the expertise does not exist in Fiji. It's never been done in Fiji before. In, so now the work is, you know, is now actually we're seeing the, the, the fruits. So from, from Monday, people who buy the set-top boxes, and it has to be certified by Wylesi, it has to be wirelessly certified set-top boxes because there are other set-top boxes available too. For example, Sky Pacific has a set-top box. But you need to get the set-top box certified by wirelessly. Um, you can buy it for no more than $99.95. Uh, but we will also be making it available for free for those people who at the moment receive subsidized water and subsidized electricity. So they can pick that up for free, and there's a particular mechanism through which they can do that, and we can talk about it later, and we'll also be advertising it in the media. So the moment you get your set-top box, you plug it into your television, you'll suddenly be getting five television stations free of charge to watch it 24 hours, um, and much better quality sound, much better quality picture. We then have the opportunity to have a couple more channels added on very quickly. So you could potentially have, you know, about seven channels. This is ter currently being tested out from Nosori to Lame, the, what we call the Nosori Lame Corridor now. Some people say Suva Nosori Corridor. And uh, it'll be on for the next few months. We then hope to have uh, the Western Division come on board fairly quickly. Um, we want to be conservative with the timelines. So we'll say by December, the Western Division should also have the uh, digital television rollout to them. And soon thereafter, uh, later next year, uh, in Vanuolevu. What this will do, Edwin, which is very exciting also, is that uh, we'll get a better reach. So people who previously, with a normal UHF antenna, uh, weren't getting very good reception, get better reception. Uh, we hope to get a lot more network coverage. So. You know, it's not like, well, FBC has this much, and, you know, like at the moment, FBC has a higher network coverage than Fiji TV. That's a fact. Is it, is it correct that digital television and the way it's being rolled out has the potential to provide 100% coverage for yeah. TV, which, which to this day has not been achieved? So FBC at the moment has a much bigger, bigger footprint than Fiji TV, uh, and that's a fact. Now, but we're hoping with digital television, everybody will have a bigger footprint. So not just FBC but also Fiji TV. So it gives everybody the options to watch more television channels. Yes, the, the footprint will even get larger. Uh, we hope to go out to the outer islands too. There will obviously be certain parts of Fiji because of the terrain. You know, we, we volcanic island, Viti Levu, for example, in certain areas in Vanu Levu, people's homes may be right in the gully. So they may need to do some type of sort of boosting to be able to catch the, catch the wave. So there will be you know, some places where you could have like them. I mean, we have that, for example, in Australia. Talking about Australia, the digital sort of quality that we have is a lot better than what they have in Australia because we've got a newer technology. So that's the whole idea. But the exciting thing is this. By having more channels available, we can actually have the opportunity to put a lot of educational programs on. You know, it's not just a formal education curriculum that we can have on because you've got more free-to-air channels, more public service broadcasting opportunities. Uh, which your company does at the moment. But also we could have programs, for example, you know, showing farmers how to plant things, when to plant things, how to put in the seeds, a lot more educational programs. We have issues with climate change, you know, for telling people how to mitigate, uh, you know, so climate change effects, adaptation measures. 
So it gives you a lot more opportunities to have more educational programs. We are a developing country. That's the reality. And so we have to ensure that we have a very national um, uh, you know, agenda towards addressing many of these day-to-day -day issues. So whether it's the sugarcane industry, showing farmers what can be done, uh, you know, uh, planting new crops, uh, talking about climate change, because you know that people actually uh, react a lot better and a lot quicker to visual information. You can talk about it sometimes on the radio, you can give somebody a leaflet, but you actually visualize that and you put it in a sort of you know, visual format, people react a lot better. And that's, that's, a form, and that's, you know, that's a fact. And with that, we've come to the end of another segment, Minister. We're going to take a break now. Stay with us. We'll be back shortly. Good evening and welcome back. We are continuing discussions with Communications Minister A.S.A. Kayum about digital TV, which begins trials from tomorrow morning. Minister, getting to this stage, to have the trials begin, uh, there must have been quite a bit of work going on behind the scenes, as you mentioned. Uh, what sort of work did this entail, and what happens to the existing infrastructure in terms of analog TV transmission? Uh, a lot of companies have towers here and towers there, and mm. a whole lot of towers. What happens to all of that? Yes, yeah, see, I mean, Edwin, that again is an issue that I th un unfortunately was not dealt with, I think, previously. When, for example, when they brought in television in the 1990s and also when they started off with the mobile phone, you know, Vodafone company, the, the government or Ministry of Communication then should have thought about infrastructure sharing. A lot of governments do that, uh, have advocated for that. We, in fact, have been wanting to do that for some time too. But it's very important for us to get digital television up and running. See, at the moment, Nakombo Levu, that is up the hill up here in Suva, you'll see this very limited space, which is sort of one of the highest peaks around Suva. So every person, every company wants to have a tower there. So you have TFL, you have Fiji TV, you have FPC, you have Vodafone, you have Digicel, and everybody else that wants some kind of reception. Now, it is very, un, it is very ghastly when you look at it from a, it's what you call sight pollution, uh, visual pollution. Uh, it also means that individual companies have to put money up front to invest in that capital uh, to get the tower up. It costs money. So it puts pressure on them, charging the consumer more to, for them to recover the cost. Um, it also means that in some instances we found that the land actually is leased by one person. For example, it could be TFL. And then they sublease it to all these other people. And sometimes when the cyclone TFL say, well, you can't access it now because we'll tell you when to access it. Well, these are the kind of issues we found. What we've been advocating for is the sharing of infrastructure. You should have a one solid tower built to the strength where everybody can put their transmitters on it. You just have one tower. You'll see throughout Fiji, everybody has their own little tower jutting out from, from, from the earth. So I think the, we're, we're trying to 